year ago, we started our journey, accelerated by Superstage. Our challenge was one of the most difficult challenges facing the current country, and that was dropping out of students in university. To solve this problem, we decided to put innovation at the heart of it. The reason we put innovation at the heart of it was because multiple times we had attempted to solve a similar problem using student organizations and just by offering our own tech skills in low-end schools, but all at the same time getting simple and straightforward rejection from the students. Solving this problem for us was, was very simple. We just wanted to get back to the grassroots. Students fail because they don't understand concepts from the start. But a lot of people told us there's a lot of content online, so students are able to download it and use it. In our findings, we realized that that was false. The students would be able to download the content, but they didn't know how to use it. Would you use a differential calculus note from Yale, or would you use it before you studied geometry? So using teachers, as well as education advisors, we created a study plan that we put online based on the Department of Education's study plan. On the study plan, we put resources that were structured according to how you're supposed to learn. So you're supposed to do geometry before you do trigonometry, before you do differential calculus, because that's, all it, that's how it all comes together. But the most important thing after we got onto Superstage is we met a lot of mentors who helped us innovate it, not only in solving the problem, but making it adaptable and feasible in the market. So students are students. Their attention is limited, right? All they want to do is spend time on Facebook and mix it chatting. So what we decided to do was gamify the platform. So when a student does an assessment of a past exam paper or any exercise in class, they earn points. And these points are attributed and accrued to a final thing, which is either airtime or just data bundles that they can use to chat. In many ways, we looked at the textbooks which are the main modus operandi that teachers use for, for students. And we realized that half of the textbooks that we came across had half of them untouched because the students would only flick through the first chapters at the beginning of the semester and leave them. So we decided to make these books interactive. And by putting videos on the actual pages and helping students who don't understand a particular concept just watch the video in the textbook, we started getting a lot of stuff excited. But that was the only second stage. The final stage was the process and the delivery. Our country has got high data costs. How are you supposed to help a student who can't afford to go buy a textbook download a video? So we started working with network operators compressing videos into Infobytes, three-minute videos that summarize what you're supposed to study. And just like we like little Infobytes of news, the students started liking little Infobytes of topics as well. And through this, we started doing clever and interesting stuff, like giving them results instantly when they do an assessment, or most importantly, incentivizing them by using group dynamics. So we saw that at the heart of it, innovation helped propel our product to the students and get it accepted. But finally, we realized that we were on the verge of something more important than we thought it was. We never thought of tackling uh, problems that disabled students faced. But with these videos that were already created, we started partnering with organizations that started putting sign language videos on the corner sections of every single video that we had. But as every invention, the biggest issue was sustainability. How do we sustain ourselves? Three months after Superstage, we'd run out of funds, we'd left university after graduation, and we're sitting there with nowhere else to go. And this is where the platform that Superstage gives us came in the most important way. By accessing the mentors and Gina, as well as everyone else who was part of the competition, we started rallying support. And before we knew it, we had an office at the Bandwidth Barn with regular bi-weekly sessions with mentors who started companies and built them from the ground up. And most importantly, we got the word out. And eventually, our work found its way to the United Nations, where we finally won the best educational technology tackling the Millennium Development Goal for Education for All. So what does this mean? So what does this mean? When we entered Superstage, we wanted to win. 
Unfortunately, we didn't win. My advice to everyone else here is you did not create your idea to earn a prize. You created your idea to serve a purpose. And Superstage will help you serve the purpose. Thank you.